Alright, now it's time for my seventh review. Let's see, what is it gonna be? Mm, here it is. Obsidian's fan reviews number seven will be... Devil May Cry 2? Oh, shit. This is what happens when my fans ask for a negative review. God damn it, let's just get over it, shall we? The original Devil May Cry was one of the most influential games of the industry back in the day when it was released. With a charismatic protagonist, interesting lore, and blood pumping action, this game is the main reason the hack and slash genre exists today in the first place. Well, can you see everything that made DMC 1 so good? All of that? Yeah, that's pretty much absent from its sequel. In all seriousness, I recently fell in love with this incredible franchise. I played the original game and Devil May Cry 3 and loved them. However, I still kept hearing how atrocious the second game in the franchise was and that I should avoid even touching it. I finally decided to give it a chance and now I can say I am really, really happy. No, I am not happy about the game, it's a piece of garbage. But I am happy because I finally got enough good material for my first negative review. <laughs> Infamous for being one of the most disappointing video game sequels of all time, Devil May Cry 2 was released in 2003 for the PlayStation 2. And it was met with a lot of negative feedback, especially because it lacks everything that made its predecessor so good, which was a milestone in the action genre. So, I am here today for Obsidious Fan Reviews number 7, in which I will tackle Devil May Cry 2 and analyze the game itself. Why is this one of the worst sequels of all time? What's wrong with it? Why do people hate it so much? And the biggest question of all, how the hell did Capcom manage to save the franchise after such a train wreck of a game? Well, stay here and brace yourself, because this video will get pretty bumpy. Enjoy my review of Devil May Crap 2. Wait a minute, why did I put a segment dedicated to the story in this review? Wait, you mean this game actually had a plot? Because I sure as hell didn't notice! I mean, the story was never an important feature of the Devil May Cry franchise, but at least the original game tried to tell an interesting story with interesting characters and a lot of memorable moments, even if it was a bit unintentional at times. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with love! Yeah, 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 we know how this scene goes, there is no need to repeat it. In DMC2, after the events of the first game, Dante is hired by a mysterious woman named Lucia, who asks him to help fight Arius, an international businessman who is using demonic power in an effort to conquer the world. And I don't really care about the plot at all. If there is one way to describe the story of this game, that would be underdeveloped. It feels like if Capcom was not even trying to tell a story with this one. I mean, the main concept of the story had a lot of potential and it was later used with a different approach for DMC The Will May Cry. But this is one of those games in which you will just forget the story pretty fast, since there are very few cutscenes and they are completely devoid of dialogue or interesting stuff in them. Now, this is a hack and slash game, so I won't take too many points of it because of the lackluster storyline, but it still is disappointing to see such a boring, bland and forgettable story that actually had potential. Especially the characters. Oh my god, I hate the characters of this game so much. First of all, we have Lucia, the new female lead. She actually has an interesting backstory, but just like everything else regarding the story of this game, she ends up being bland, forgettable and boring, because the developers didn't even try to develop her story. Same goes for the villain, Argus. He's boring and predictable. But then we have the worst character in the entire game, the one and only Dante. Yeah, what I just said, it's very true. Dante is the worst character of Devil May Cry 2. Remember that funny and iconic character from the original game? With his funny antics and hilarious one-liners. Wasn't he just awesome in that game? 
well, for whatever reason, Capcom decided to completely take everything that made Dante so awesome and made him completely silent, with nothing interesting to say, and just like every other character in the game, bland, boring and forgettable. This is even more insulting considering how awesome he used to be. This truly is the worst incarnation of Dante ever. I mean, fanboys always hate on Dante from DMC, but at least he's interesting, memorable and sometimes even funny, even if it's unintentional at times. And he's an entire different character in a different universe. You know what? Let's compare both Dantes to see which one is better. Yeah, but you can call me Dante the Demon Killer. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? I am Marcus. You're an asshole! Rapidly spreading sexual disease of the unholy kind. Made that the best kind, Bob. I hate you so much, DMC2 Dante! While Devil May Cry 2 fails miserably on its story and gameplay, I must admit this presentation is not quite bad. Now, we all know that a game is not going to be good just because it looks good, but I am so relieved to find something that's actually decent about this game that you must cut me some slack! The graphics of DMC2 are top-notch, I mean, the original Devil May Cry looked fantastic for its time and this sequel delivered in improving those graphics, especially in the HD collection, that looks very smooth, especially when you're engaged in the quote-unquote action, but we'll talk about that failure later. Overall, I must admit that Devil May Cry 2 in general is just a very well-designed game, the environments look beautiful, the enemies look memorable, and even the characters have some badass designs to them. True, but their personalities still are boring and forgettable. Ha! Huh. Funny how video games can reflect events of our real life sometimes, eh? However, there is a big design flaw that not only pisses me off in DMC2, but also in all of the classic Devil May Cry games. The camera placement. If you didn't know already, Devil May Cry 1 was originally going to be Resident Evil 4, but it was so different to the other games that it was scrapped and made into an entirely new IP. So, based on this fact, it makes sense that the game kept the fixed camera of the classic Resident Evil games. Now, I am not a fan of this type of camera myself, but it made sense to keep it in the original Devil May Cry and even in Dante's Awakening, as those games take place in closed environments and the fixed camera helps build in a feeling of intrigue and mystery. In Devil May Cry 2, however, it's a whole different story, since this game takes place in huge cities, towns or factories, and while I appreciate the change of location for once, the fixed camera completely ruins it, as it gives very limited vision of what you are doing when the action is going on. It's annoying and frustrating, but since the combat of this game is awful anyways, I guess this is not a big deal? Eh, uh, not really, the camera still is a big design flaw. How this game looks aside, how does this game sound? Well, first of all, I have to address the soundtrack, which is possibly the best thing in the entire game. Whether this is a good thing or a bad thing depends on you. The music of Devil May Cry 2 feels like every other title in the franchise. When nothing is happening, it creates a great atmosphere of loneliness and mystery, but when the enemies pop up, the music switches to fast, blood-pumping rock. Too bad the action itself is not in the same level as the music. While this soundtrack is far from being the best in the series, it still is enjoyable enough to listen to it every now and then. Finally, before we move on to the gameplay section, there's the voice acting. Now, like I mentioned before, there is little to no dialogue in this game, so you will almost never listen to the characters talking. I mean, the acting is not quite bad, but you will most likely forget the voices of all the characters. It's better than the voice acting in Devil May Cry 1, though but that wasn't too hard to top with scenes like I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! Hey, bitch! Shut your mouth! He 
even if the story of DMC2 is awful and the presentation is just okay, the gameplay is where most of this game's real problems are. And I don't know where to begin, because there is a lot wrong with this game that I have to address. The combat system in Devil May Cry 1 was very entertaining and it was the basis for most hack and slash nowadays, but it definitely didn't age very well, as it can feel clunky and stiffy at times. Of course, this meant that it was a natural move for a sequel to improve on it by having a more fluid combat. Sounds simple, right? Then how the fuck did they manage to even make it slower and clunkier? This horrible combat system is one of the main reasons I really can't stand this game at all. While I admit that it can be a bit fun at the beginning, it ends up feeling really unreliable and repetitive, to the point the entire game feels like a chore. Seriously, there were times where I actually preferred to go make my homework rather than to keep on playing. Yeah, Devil May Cry 2 can get that boring. Even if the combat is slow, clunky and extremely repetitive, the controls are not half bad. They are basic, yeah, but they feel natural, so it's a good thing that even if you are getting bored, at least your hands don't end up getting hurt, eh? Kid Icarus Uprising should learn a thing from this game. <laughs> However, if there's something I have to give points to Devil May Cry 2 for doing, it's the inclusion of a brand new dodge button. I mean, yeah, Dante could sort of dodge in the previous game by locking on an enemy, but now there's an entire button dedicated to the action itself, and it makes his mobility a lot more fluid, especially because it can be used, so Dante runs across walls, and it's useful to dodge enemy attacks. Too bad the game is so easy that you won't even be using it too often. And here we have another one of DMC2's flaws, and one of the reasons its combat is so repetitive and boring. The original Devil May Cry was famous for being extremely challenging as heck. Even the DMC games released after this one are known as some of the hardest in video game history. But this one is this insultingly easy, as in the enemies don't even try to attack you most of the times. And if they do, they are most likely not even going to take much damage from you. This is so stupid that it's actually funny at times! However, there are other factors that affect Devil May Cry 2's difficulty, or at least the lack of it. You see, guns in Devil May Cry games always work more like tools rather than actual weapons. You will go nowhere if you try to defeat all of your enemies with them, but they work quite well not only to deal some extra damage, but it also helps you to separate enemies from each other or keeping them up in the air for some aerial combos. In this game, however, it's a whole different story. The guns Dante uses in this game are overpowered. Doesn't matter if it's ebony and ivory, a shotgun or a missile launcher, I am not kidding when I say that you can breeze through the entire game without using a single melee attack. As cool as this sounds, only using your guns makes the game even more repetitive and stale. I mean, what's the point of a hack and slash game if you only shoot enemies? And that raises even another question. Why the hell did Capcom decide to include an easy switch button just for the guns? I mean, just by pressing the R2 button, you can switch guns in a second, which is actually really useful, but why don't do the same for the weapons? Why did we have to wait for DMC3 to include that badass feature of being able to change weapons in the middle of a combo? It's so stupid! Well, I actually have the answer for that because the melee weapons and the upgrade system in this game as a whole are bullsh**. Aside from Rebellion, Dante will get the weapons Vendetta and Merciless, and while they look really cool, all of these swords play just the same. I mean, even Devil May Cry 1 had Ifrit as a different type of weapon that added variety. But no, in this game they are all exactly the same. And when you use red orbs in order to power up these weapons, you will feel exactly the same, especially because of how easy this game is right from the very beginning. Design flaws like this really make me wonder what the hell was Capcom thinking when developing Devil May Cry 2. So far, most of the things that DMC2 achieved were either awful or just good, but nothing particularly mind-blowing. Well, surprise surprise, there's an actual gameplay mechanic in this game that is very clever. Too bad it was not implemented very well. Two wars. Customizable Devil Trigger. W wait, what? All the way through his journey, Dante can pick up different amulets to customize his Devil Trigger. He may wield fire, heal himself, fly, and a lot more. This customization not only is really interesting and diverse, but it's also used for some really clever puzzle and platforming segments. 
The only problem with this is that these segments are extremely rare to find in the entire game. And it's a shame, because it could have helped to make the gameplay a bit less repetitive. Now, customization aside, there is a big problem with the Devil Trigger in Devil May Cry 2. It's really broken. In most games in the franchise, Dante can press a button and transform into a stronger version of himself as a demon in order to make the fighting easier for you. But the twist is, is that you have to work hard to get your Devil Trigger bar filled up by killing enemies. Not only that, but once it's activated, it doesn't last very long and thus giving you a sense of balance. Yet, yeah, that sense of balance is pretty much absent in the sequel. The Devil Trigger bar is really easy to fill up with no effort whatsoever, and once it's activated, it takes too long for it to deplete, and Dante's demon powers are just too powerful. I am not kidding that you can actually transform and take down giant bosses in less than few seconds. This issue with the Devil Trigger not only makes the game even easier, but it also makes it feel mindless and downright stupid at times. Oh, and don't get me started on the boss battles. I will be blunt here, they all suck. A lot. While they do have some really epic designs, these bosses summarize everything wrong with the game in a nutshell. They are easy, uninspired, repetitive and annoying, especially considering you can easily defeat them with Devil Trigger and your guns very quickly. It's really funny if you see how big and threatening some of these bosses try to be, yet you can defeat them with no effort whatsoever. I can easily say that Devil May Cry 2 holds the worst collection of boss battles I've ever seen, and if you know me well, you will know I am going to take off a lot of points for that. Before moving on to the final part of this review, I think I had to address Lucia's story. Yes, there is a big part of this game in which you play as Dante's female co-star, Lucia, and while I admit she plays much better and entertaining than Dante, this part still is as boring and easy as the rest of the game. If this was a good game, I would highly appreciate the inclusion of another playable character, but if you didn't like Dante's gameplay at all, I say you should skip playing as Lucia, since it doesn't change that much, really. Seriously, what can be said about Devil May Cry 2? This is definitely one of the most disappointing sequels in video game history. When I first began playing this game, I kind of enjoyed it. It was a guilty pleasure to have a Devil May Cry game that was so easy. However, the more I played it, the more I began to hate it with passion. And now I can't even stand Devil May Cry 2. And, funny enough, whenever I asked somebody about this game, everybody told me they hated it as well. It's overall a shit stain in an otherwise amazing action franchise. Of course, this is far from being one of the worst games of all time, since it has a fair share of good things in it. The graphics look great even for today's standards, the soundtrack is amazing, the character and enemy designs are memorable, the customizable Devil Trigger is really creative, and I admit you can have a bit of fun with the combat even if it is just for a few minutes. However, the negatives definitely overcome the positives. The forgettable story, the boring characters, which include the worst version of Dante ever, the annoying fixed camera, the conkly combat, repetitive gameplay, lack of challenge, uninspired bosses, broken mechanics, and a long list of etc. Devil May Cry 2 gets my final score of a 4 out of 10, and I will label it with the word downgrade. I mean, its predecessor was the most influential game in the entire genre, and it was a lot of potential for a great sequel. But sadly, DMC2 didn't deliver, and instead of fixing everything, it brought a lot of more issues and flaws instead. If anything, this game makes me love Devil May Cry 3 even more, because it's easy to tell Capcom put a lot of effort into that amazing game just to save the franchise from this awful game that almost killed it. Should you play Devil May Cry 2? Well, no, never do it, stay away from this freaking game! If you want an amazing hack and slash experience, try out any other game from this franchise, especially DMC3. Heck, you should even play the reboot DMC Devil May Cry, now that's a solid hack and slash game. However, if you are interested in the classic Devil May Cry games, I say you should get the HD collection. Play 1 and 3 first, and then try out 2, just to see how awful it really is. But be warned, you may end up hating it after a few minutes of playing it. On the other hand, if you lack a PS3 or Xbox 360 for the HD collection, never, never ever buy Devil May Cry 2 for the PlayStation 2. Never! 
Not only it's a waste of money, but it also costs more than most PS2 games, since it has two discs, one for Dante's and another one for Lucia's Adventure. But trust me, it's not worth paying too much for this piece of garbage of a game. I am Obsidious Fan signing off. Feel free to leave a comment with your thoughts on this game and maybe even request a game you want me to review in the future. Thanks a lot for watching, see you guys next time! Yeah.